Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to a new Zor Education. Um, today we will consider um, a little bit more complex case of double integrals. Now, the previous lecture was about double integrals on rectangular base. In this lecture, I will present the circular base uh, on which we will be integrating the, this particular surface. Now, this surface represents some kind of a function of two arguments, f of x, y, and um, it's defined on this circle of radius r with the center uh, at, at origin of coordinates, and I would like to know the volume under this surface, which is um, bounded by the surface on the top, the x, y, plane on the bottom and this circular uh, surface uh, on the sides. Now I obviously assume that the function is smooth enough and I will use exactly the same uh, approach as with um, double integrals on rectangular base which basically is the same as when I was talking about single integrals when I was talking about area under the curve which means I will divide the base into small pieces. In this case, small pieces would be obviously something like this. These lines would represent division by x and these lines would be representing division by y. Something like this. Now, on each little rectangle I will build a rectangular um, uh, parallelepiped which will go all the way up to the surface. Now, obviously, we have to consider the good case when the, when the surface is smooth enough and the sum of these volumes of parallelepipeds um, as I am um, shrinking all these intervals in which I um, divide my uh, circle at the base. Um, so the sum of these uh, volumes will have a limit which we will call basically the limit of this volume under the surface with the base circle. Now this volume does not depend again in smooth cases of the surface it does not depend on how exactly we are dividing our x's and y's uh, as long as the uh, largest dimension of these rectangles goes down to zero. And obviously the number of these rectangles is um, going to infinity. I do realize that at the edges we will have certain, um, well, we have a circular base, right? We are dividing it into rectangles, so obviously there will not be a smooth um, uh, inscribing, if you wish, of these rectangles into a circles. But again, um, the, the, the theorem states that as we are diminishing the dimensions of these circles, they will be tighter and tighter um, inscribed into the circle and the perpendiculars which I am um, uh, constructing which form my parallelepipeds um, will be again tighter and tighter um, inscribed into the surface and at the limit we will have the same limit no matter how we divide this, divide this thing. So our um, purpose right now to summarize now each particular volume, let's call it delta uh, V I J. What is this particular volume? Well, it's obviously the, uh, it's a parallelepiped, right? So it will be the b uh, area of the base. Base is delta X I times delta Y J, right? If I and J I are numbers of these divisions, times the height and the height would be f of x i y j. So somewhere here there is a point which is x i and i and y j. Now there is a square 
uh, which is uh, which 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 this particular point determines, and that's how my individual parallelepipeds volume would be expressed. Now, what we have to do uh, to calculate the sum sum would be basically sum of uh, delta vij, and somehow we have to summarize by a and by j, by, by i and by j. But this is exactly what's the difference between the, the circular base is and the rectangular base. In case of rectangular base, what we could do is, now imagine this is a rectangle. We can actually do the summarization by x from 0 to whatever the maximum m, and for each of those, have summarization by y, again from 0 to, to n, um, or we can do the other way around. We can do by y and then by x, doesn't really matter. In this case, situation is a little bit more complex. We can obviously start um, uh, our summation by one of the dimensions, let's say by x, let's call it primary, all right? Now, so x is actually going, okay, this is my x, so go, going from um, the beginning, which is x0, to the maximum, which is x m, uh, where x0 corresponds to minus r, where r is the radius, and x m, the last one, corresponds to plus r. So, we can do this, but, however, for each x, wherever we chose x, let's say we chose this particular x. y is only within these boundaries. It's not from maximum to minimum, or from minimum to maximum, from 0 to n. No, it's from some kind of number which is inside the circle to some kind of a number which is also inside the circle. So, in case of rectangle, I will just go and replace this with in integrals, if you remember, from A to B and from C to D, where A, B, C, D are my dimensions of the rectangle. This is by X and this is by Y. And then I put F of X, Y, D, uh, DX, DY. Now, in this case, we cannot, we cannot do this. In this case, we can say that our sum would be Actually, well, let me call it, instead of approximation, I will put, it converges to. It converges to different kind of integral. Integral by x would really be from minus r to r, right? By x, from minus r to r. But, let me do it differently. I will put dx here, and then I will open parenthesis, and I will um, say exactly what I would like to integrate. Now, I would like to integrate now by y, right? But y should not be counted from minus r to, uh, to plus r. Let me just draw a circle. If this is minus r and r by x, now, whenever my x is fixed, how y is changing? What is this particular? This is, if this is x, this is r, then this is square root integral, square root of r square minus x square with a minus sign, and square root r square minus x square with a plus sign. And now I can have the function which is the height of this perpendicular, height of this uh, parallel pivot and dy. So that's what, that's what my summation and the resulting integration should actually be. So the limits of my integration by y depend on value of the x. That's why I put it in, in parentheses. Now, how can I take this integral? Well, very simply. I assume that x is a constant and take this integral, which is basically an integral of one variable. So I will take this 
uh, anti antiderivative uh, indefinite integral and substitute uh, by formula uh, of Newton Leibniz the top and bottom and that will get the result and then the result will depend on x so now I have the integration by x of a function of x and I can do basically this so in theory what people really do is they do not put these parentheses they put something like this integral from minus r to r integral from minus r square minus x square to r square minus x square f of x y and now what's very important is the order of uh, differentials first I put dy here and then dx it means that this belongs to the first um, integration and then when I have performed this integration um, the second one would be only by x so it's two single integrations basically it's the same as in case of rectangular base the only difference is that in case of rectangular I have two constants here but it still depend but still in inside uh, inside in integral will still depend on one of the parameters if I integrate by y my x would be um, a, a completely independent variable and then I integrate by x now if, in case my limits also depend on the same x I will still have a function of x as a result of integration so it doesn't really matter um, whether these are variables or constants as a result of the first integration I will still get the function of x and then I will integrate it um, the second time by x so that's basically the whole story now why I specifically decided to choose um, a circular base well for one very simple reason this particular technique um, would also work in many other cases um, what's very important is to understand that whenever I have my limits also dependent on the x in this particular case and the primary um, variable it does not have to be uh, a circle it can be anything it can be ellipse it can be anything else so basically um, just just as an example it can be for instance it can be let's say a pyramid in which case my x would be if this is my this is my x this is my y my x would be from 0 to some maximum whatever it is but for every x integration by y would be along this line which obviously depends on how far uh, uh, along the x-axis I have moved this point so it's dif different so the integration by, by y will depend it will be always from zero to something and that something which depend would be dependent on what exactly my x is on this distance so this depends on this integration by y depends on where exactly my x stops it would be something similar to this so this would be probably zero in this case and this would be something which depends on x and I'll probably do this maybe in the next lecture just as an example now in this lecture I would like actually to do one example uh, relatively simple so you would uh, understand how it works so let's assume that I have a cylinder a real cylinder so my function is a constant equal to h so it's always h it's defined on this circle from uh, with a radius r now what should I have as a volume well I should have the area of the base times height that's what I have to have well let's just do the integration and see if we have it right so integral from minus r to r this is by x integral from minus r square minus x square to r square minus x square 
of h, right? Function is equal to h constant. First dy and then dx. All right. Okay. So this integral, inner integral, well, this is a constant, right? So the result would be h y in the limits of minus square root of r square minus x square to r square minus x square equals to. We have to substitute into y. So it will be uh, 2h square root of r square minus x square, right? So that's my result. From this, I subtract this. h is a multiplier, so I will have two square roots. Okay. So, fine. Let me substitute inside of this thing. My second integration would be, now, 2h I can obviously put outside of the integration, and I will have this. Great. Well, there are many ways of doing some, some integrals like this. Probably the easiest way is to substitute x is equal to r uh, sine t. Uh, obviously, x cannot exceed uh, r, so this is a legitimate substitution, where t is from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's how x would uh, change from minus r to r, right? Sine of minus pi over 2 is minus 1 times r, it would be this. And, uh, okay, so, what is this integral in this case? Uh, 2 integral, um, that would be from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, right? If t is equal to minus pi over 2, then x is equal to r and sine of minus pi over 2 minus 1, which is minus r, and this would be plus r, right? So that's fine. Now, what is square root of uh, r square minus x square? Well, that's r square times 1 minus sine square, which is cosine square, which is r cosine t, right? Okay, so it's r cosine t. What is dx? dx is differential, which means it's a um, derivative. So r, uh, derivative of sine is a cosine. So it's r square cosine square uh, dt, right? Okay, fine. I got that. So it's this integral. How can I simplify it? I don't like this cosine square. Well, I will do this. Um, remember, cosine of 2t is equal to... Uh, let me take another... cosine 2t is equal to cosine square minus sine square or cosine square minus 1 minus cosine so it's 2 cosine square t minus 1 right from which cosine square equals to um, 1 plus cosine 2t divided by 2 right so that's what I'm going to do. I will substitute, instead of cosine square, I will substitute this, getting the following. Uh, 2 integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Well, r square can go outside. So instead of cosine square, I will put this. 
Now this is divided by 2 and I have 2 here, so let me just get rid of the 2 and division by 2 and I will have only 1 plus cosine of 2t dt. That's what I have. Now this is easier because this is just the sum of two integrals, right? So it's integral of 1, which is our square integral from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, 1 dt. That's one thing. Plus our square integral of minus pi over 2 to pi over 2 of cosine of 2t dt. Okay, so we will do it separately. Now, this one, integral of this, is r squared times t, which is antiderivative, in the limits from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. So it's pi over 2 minus minus pi over 2. So it's pi, right? So it's pi r squared. That's what this thing is. Um, by the way, somewhere along the line, I forgot this multiplier h, which was in the very beginning. Um, uh, sorry about this, but it's always multiplied by h. So everything should be multiplied by h. This, 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 everything. I, uh, I wiped it out, but that was from the very beginning, obviously, right? Because the very first integral, if you remember, I had to multiply by h. All right, by height of perpendicular. All right, now, so I will have, this is my first integral, this one. Now my second integral, my second integral, let's put it here, minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Um, what's the um, indefinite integral, antiderivative of cosine of 2t? Well, that's... Um, um, sine one-half sine of 2t, right? From minus pi over 2 to pi over 2. Now, uh, if I will substitute pi over 2 into the t, it would be pi, right? Sine of pi is 0. Minus pi over 2, also 0. So it would be 0 minus 0, which is 0. So this thing is zero, and my result is this, which corresponds to my original geometric formula. Okay, basically it works. Maybe in the next lecture I will do another example, um, when I promise I will not forget the multiplier. Um, in any case, um, my, my, my purpose was to basically show that integration works, and you will get the correct formula. Now. Can I say that this is the proof of this formula? Well, no. I mean, uh, this formula is obtained through also some kind of um, uh, limit, uh, limiting procedure. Uh, in case of a cylinder, I remember we were just slicing it um, uh, by horizontal planes, and we also kind of went to a, uh, some kind of a limit, which is basically the same thing as integration. But when I was talking about geometry, I did not use the term integration. I was using, well, this is a sum, and let's just go to the limit, and then we had to, to, to prove somehow that the limit exists. And uh, all this is actually a masked integration, so to speak. So, basically, it all goes to the definition, and the most important theorem is that no matter how we break into small pieces our basis uh, to get the volume as a limit of the sum of volumes of parallelepipeds. Or, in case of uh, flat uh, figures, whenever we are talking about area under, uh, under a curve, in all these cases we were dealing with integration, which is summation uh, stretched to a limit, summation of infinitely small pieces infinitely large number of times and um, 
and the existence of this limit and its independence on how we break our uh, our base. These are extremely important and not very easy uh, theorems of uh, of higher mathematics. Uh, for now, I think you should really be just thinking that there are these theorems exist. They cannot they they, they can be proved. And uh, there are certain restrictions on the surface um, as much as on the curve, whenever we were talking about areas, restrictions of smoothness. If these are smooth enough, for instance, for integration, uh, for area and for volume, um, the continuousness is a sufficient condition. Not necessary, but sufficient condition. So you don't really need differentiability of the surface or, or, or a curve, etc. To, to integrate. But uh, all the functions which you are basically learning at school are usually continuous and um, that includes obviously the functions of uh, two arguments and that's why we can really talk about integration as a valid procedure because we all kind of have it in mind that there is a theorem which states that no matter how we break it we will get it right. All right. Thanks very much, but I would suggest you to do, um, try to uh, derive the same formula for, for cylinder, whatever I was just did, just by yourself on a, a clean sheet of paper. Um, do this integration uh, completely. Do not forget the factor which H, which I have forgotten, and, uh, and see if you get the right results. It's very good exercise, and uh, again, next lecture maybe I will just come up with some other a uh, little example uh, of that. Thanks a lot and good luck!